Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Nathan, we're doing another Harry Styles video. It's not a song, it's not a it's not a music video or a concert performance. It's a I actually have no idea. I think it's that buddy. I forget his name. Let us know in the chat who it is. I forget his name. I think they're they're friends. Remember they went to the bingo hall together? Him and that guy? Oh, oh. I think okay. it might be him again. I think he's I think he might be in the studio with the dude. I think. Okay. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it because I don't watch the videos, folks. And Celeste, what I love about Celeste, she just sends us the link and says, watch it. I'm like, okay. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> so it's Harry Styles. That's all I know. Um, yeah. It's going to be a watch along. It's a watch along, folks. It's a reaction, sure. But Nathan and I are watching a 14 minute video. You're going to watch it with us. So we'll pause it periodically. Here we go. Morning, everybody. It's Friday oh, morning Nick. on yeah. BBC Radio One. It's Grimmy with you on the Radio One Breakfast Show. Harry Styles is here. Thanks for having me. Very welcome, Harry. Thank you. So I have some video messages for you from some people who wanted to say hello oh. today. Because people genuinely care about today, and it's a big day. Thank you. And they wanted to send in a message and a question. So you have no idea about these people, do you? I don't know who's on there. This is a surprise. And I did tease you the other day, and I said, we've got a surprise for you. But yeah. it's not a bad surprise. This is a nice <laughs> surprise. Like, yeah. So if you just yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. Harry's been with this guy. Apparently they're friends or something. But Harry already kind of knows this won't be typical people something's going on here he's he's yeah, already suspicious so some, <laughs> this is gonna be like either people he knows or right. yeah 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 always it's always risky with those what <laughs> see he knows for you on the radio <laughs> yeah. it's like am i gonna like it well let's find out hello harry styles my oh, name's chris i've been a fan of yours for a long long time um you're the biggest face on my one Direction tattoo, <laughs> and I was just wondering. I wrote to the fan club, Harry Styles fan club, to see about if I could be working there as a job. Like I'll clean anything, you know. But no one wrote back to me, and I was wondering if you could tell me what would be the best way of advancing. I'm in a job right now that I like, but I <laughs> would give it all up to run your fan club. So this is really just like a, an application letter. Um, to you, let me know. All the best, man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I bet you Chris did send an email or something to the fan club, and he didn't get a response. I, yeah. I bet you he did something silly like that, maybe hoping to get a response and still say something to Harry with that response. But I bet you he sent something for this video clip, yeah. didn't get the response. So he's like, "Hey, man, I sent something to your cl club, and nobody responded to me." I don't know if I've said this before, but Chris Martin and Harry Styles have a very similar sense of humor. Um. What's well, that British Street dry presence. humor that we like as well? Yeah, but but in particular, these guys I think have a lot more in common. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. No, it's great. Yeah, it's great. So he, uh, Harry seemed very pleased by that. Let's see how he responds to Chris. Christopher Martin there um, with a question to run the fan club. I'd say that he has to focus on what he'd like to do at the fan club. Okay. Um, he said he'd clean everything. I think it, it, <laughs> anything. It makes him yeah. look like he's kind of not focused right like, can you say <laughs> i want to do this job and i think i can do it mm. um but yeah yes chris martin yes chris you, yes you can do that i feel like i, I like all the trees i know trees. where do you think he is like in i don't know i feel like I want, it, where I feel do like you go i feel like it stinks of malibu Mm. Do you know what I mean? A little ocean breeze. Yeah. Nice. I think he's just had a nice juice. Mm. Do that video. And then he's off to... He's some yoga. He's off to yoga, yeah. And some rocks. In a there probably would be a lot to clean up at the uh, Harry Styles fan club. A lot of mopping. I assume there's a lot of mopping going on. <laughs> Every time they do a Harry Styles tour... I knew. <laughs> they... There was this part of me... It was like... There's a five percent chance that Ryan will go there with that, but no. I, what are you talking about? I'm just saying you got to. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you got to clean with a mop. You got to. You got to mop everything up. Baggy trouser. Ooh. Yeah. You know, Chris Martin was the first first person who asked who replied. So very to do punctual. this. Yeah. Oh wow. That's nice. Replied straight away. No correspondence. He's lovely. Isn't just he? just the thing. So if you do actually want someone to to work with you in in the business from the world mm. of music. It could be Chris. Have you had a chat with um, Chris Martin? Because I've heard that he gives people the chat now. You know, Bono used to give the, the chat. chat. Like, oh. <laughs> I'll tell you how to do a stadium. Oh. Like Bono, like, I've heard now Chris Martin has taken on that baton. He's good at like telling you to take care of yourself type. Right. Thing. Like what? Do you know what I mean? Like I think, 
I don't know. I think he's just very like, make sure you're all right. Yeah. He makes he's, quite, he's very zen, isn't he? Very zen. I remember That's I had nice. to introduce him on stage at a festival mm. and he was headlining. It was big yeah. weekend in Glasgow. And I said, what do you want me to say? And he like took me by the shoulders and was like, you just say whatever you want to say. And I think it will be so great. Whatever <laughs> comes out your mouth is going to be fantastic. And, you know, sounds, you just be just you, like man. Chris Martin, yeah. And I was like, wow, yeah. Chris Martin. I think he's a pretty wonderful man. He is, isn't yeah. he? I think I'm, so. I love him. Anyway, next, <laughs> next person. I agree. Hey, Harry. Hi, Grim. Hey, mate. Well, who's this? Congratulations on your single. The best memory I have of you is where... Hey, move that stupid name thing away. Why did... <laughs> Why did they put that there? That's the worst. Why did they make that so big? Let's just go back a little bit. I dismiss who this was. Who's, I just don't know who this was. Just wait. Anyway, next, next, next person. Oh. Hey, Harry. So, so what, were we, what, what were you saying, Nathan? I just, want to, I, I just want to pause so you can talk. I just to, <laughs> what? I'm just pausing How so you can talk. this in a Harry style what? video? Bad I just want to make sure. Bad. You know, Nathan, I love hanging out with you. I love I love when things hang out. It's just oh. what you so oh, cool. you just two times, you, two times. What? Just what did I do wrong this time? Play. Hey, hey hi, Grim. Hey, mate. Congratulations on your single. The best memory I have of you is when you and Grim came to see me at GAY, and you ended up trashing my whole dressing room. So cheers for that. My question for you is: You could be a superhero. Which one? Do you think? Sorry about the quality. I'm on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea I would look like this on camera. What a surprise. <laughs> oh, you caught me at my worst moment. Yeah. And even Harry. Harry knows what he knows. He just ain't saying it. That's why he did that mm -hmm. double take. Like, well, <laughs> why am I watching her in her bikini right now? <laughs> so who is that? Who is that uh, person? Do we know that person? I have no idea. Who no, okay. not a clue. All right. So, all right. Let's hear his answer. I don't know who she is either. <laughs> um, why was <laughs> why was that making you look around? Like, huh? am I the only huh? one who's confused by that? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 talk us through. If anyone's not listening to this, what just um, happened? I think she's by a waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but we asked uh, Auntie Rita to send a video, and Rita's on her holidays. Oh, okay. And if I'm honest, and she probably won't want us to tell this, but I think it's funny, so I'll risk it. I said, will you do this video for Harry? She said, yeah, of course I will. What should I say? I said, just ask him a question, maybe like tell a little story about him. She went, can I wait till I'm in the mall, you? So I'm in a bikini and everyone fancies me, yeah? <laughs> Oh, she knew what she was doing. She I said, get that doing. marketing, babe. Get it. So that's why she waited. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, do you, do you remember that when we went to see her? Yeah, I do. When we went to that show. Yeah. I think you tried to put on her stage outfit. Yeah. Which was... I don't remember. It was like chaps or something. <laughs> it was something very Rita. It was something very Rita. Yeah. Weirdly, they didn't fit. Baggy on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what was her question? What, if you could be a superhero, what would you be? Um, I feel like that's a waste of a question, if I'm honest, Rita. Catwoman, um, I see you as. Yeah. Yeah? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Look great in black. Okay, next one. Give it, give it a little tap, tap. on there. Oh. Easy, Superman, man. I'm sorry. I would just love to be... All powerful like that, and handsome, and wear glasses. Great. Fly. You want to be the fly? No, you'd fly. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Ronnie Wood. He uh, he played of course with the boys. Remember, he did that mm -hmm. song with the boys, the One Direction yeah. boys. Yeah. Hey, Harry, Ronnie here. <laughs> Good luck with the single. When are you coming over to see the twins? Yes, Ronnie Wood. What a legend. I like the Rolling Stones getting in touch to say, um, hey, good luck with the single. Yeah, what single fan. are they talking big about? Big I love Ronnie Wood. Yeah, How do you know Ronnie Wood? Year for this. Um, yeah. I think I met him at a party. I met him at like a dinner thing a few years ago. And then I went to a couple of Stone shows. I just think he's the nicest. I like it. He oh, always yeah. remembers everybody's names. Yeah. And I feel like imagine the amount of people you've met if you're Ronnie Wood. Like you've yeah. been you've been on since the sixties, and he like remembers. He's like, "All right, Grimmy." Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure the sixties was a little blur. Yeah. Right well. Good thing about Ronnie Wood 60s, is that um, 70s, he, he he he's you know such a, like you say such a friendly guy. Mm -hmm. He made friends with a cabbie, like a black cabbie in London mm -hmm. called Brian, and every day Brian texts Ronnie Wood a joke, 
every single day without really? fail. And Ronnie Wood forwards <laughs> them to me. And that's, I like that. that's the text that I get. Do you want to be in the chain? What was today's joke? Do you want me to find it for you? Okay. Because I can add you to the chain. It can go Brian, Ronnie Wood, I'd, me, I'd in you. The chain. Do you want to be in the chain? Yeah. Oh, here we go. This is a good one. Uh, the last joke from Ronnie was, um, I was just looking at my ceiling. Not sure if it's the best ceiling in the world, but it's definitely up there. <laughs> oh, good dad joke. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Do you want to be added to the group still? <laughs> No. No. Okay, next next Thank question, you. please. Yeah. Oh. Hey, we know who this is. Ed hey, Grimmy. Hey, Harry. Uh, I want to know, what was the process for this album? How many songs did you write? Where did you make it? Um, and how long have you been making it for? And did you enjoy making it? Edward oh, Shannon. Great questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, the tell you questions for a musician. Well, I just wanted to say, now we know the context. So this is like his first album. This is his right. first, first album, record. first kind of big single. Yeah. 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 Him going on so, his own. Yeah. Yeah. So this <clears> is cool. <throat> cool to see the support from these other musicians. I, it makes sense now. These are the musicians supporting Harry on his single journey and solo journey, I should say. And I like uh, great questions from Mr. Sharon there. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Any good. Oh, it's good. He's doing ever so um, well. I started the album in... I did like I had to stop in the middle of the year for when the movie uh -huh. happened. So I started I did like three weeks at the end of February last year and then stopped for about five months and then came back to it <clears throat> in July and then kind Dunkirk? of uh Is did it until Oh maybe maybe yeah. now -ish. I I finished writing I in like that. December. And did you, so, when you were doing the movie, were you, were you just completely away from it? Were you like not even thinking about it? Did yeah. You time to Which actually it? I think was good it's probably quite good yeah. yeah i think um one because i think for a while before all i'd thought about was like stressing about you know what it was going to be uh -huh. and everything and it gave me a chance to kind of completely step away from it and have a real break and then also by the end of the movie because we were swimming so much i was like oh can i just go and write some songs in the studio on land quite excited for that how often were um, you swimming in it because we did see all those pictures of you in the sea looking all like, a lot quite I a lot this, yeah. you know i yeah. still haven't um, seen that movie if you can believe it i know i know i know i yeah 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 let's do it yeah yeah whoa, whoa, i can't believe <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> um i know yeah, i just had it's i'd, I'd rewatch that with you i'd absolutely rewatch that such a good movie oh and i love mr nolan it's got nothing to do with that i just it, it's one of those things where something comes out at a certain time in your life for whatever reason I could have been I, I'd have to go back in time to see what year that came out like was I a, on a deployment did I have young babies at the time or who knows what it was where and then the movie will come and go and like I just have to carve out this window because I don't want to rush through it like I just saw Oppenheimer like a week ago mm -hmm. like I waited till it's on prime video I watched it at home I don't care um, yeah. yeah so have you seen 1917 no, that's another one. I know. I know. And I love war movies. And it's just, I know, like the big scene of him right on the beach, one shot. Uh, like I know I've heard the story I about it. But... With, I want to watch that with you. I don't care if we record it. I'm going to watch it. Well, with we'll, you. we'll see. We'll see. Chunk, chunk, uh, chunk knows he needs to watch this. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, all right. I need to watch those. I know. I know. How many did we write? Um... Okay, sorry. Put it this way. When Dunkirk was released, I remember hearing the rumblings. Of Harry Styles cameo or I don't know how big his role is I, I heard he was in the film I don't even know how big of a role he had but I remember there was quite a hoo-ha like oh no Harry Styles is stupid like he's doing it like I remember and I wasn't saying I was part of that chorus but when I heard that rumbling I kind of like oh I guess I I can see why they'd be upset about this I didn't even know what Harry Styles really looked like you know what I mean like I didn't know anything about him didn't know I didn't know nothing about him because this would have been you know whatever that was, whatever year that came out, long before we did our reactions, years before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I naively, now that I know him and know him as the person, know him as the man, uh, young man, it would be, now it'd be kind of cool to see him in it knowing his personality and that he's not a, look at me, put me in the movie, Christopher, because I'm Harry Styles. Like, it wasn't yep. about that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Bro, I, I, maybe like 70 I think seven zero. We did fifty in Jamaica. I think. Fifty. I th yeah. Not fifteen. Fifty. Why do people like, songs do songs and ideas? It's a lot. But not uh, most of it. That's including like little ideas. Right. I'd say okay. full songs, 
Maybe six. Thirty. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say there's thirty probably. Thirty good songs. I think so. And then there's one of the songs on the album I wrote a few years ago. And they're all finished and like done. Just, have you ever heard of the the Thriller principle? I mean, you're a big Michael Jackson fans. So you... Well, the Thriller, the idea with him and Quincy Jones, Michael and Quincy Jones, their their goal for that. I don't know what the, I don't know what you're asking necessarily, but I just know for that album between those two, the Quincy and Michael. Their goal was to make an album with old oh, killer, no filler. Like every song could be a single, correct? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. They, the rumor is, and I don't know if it's true, there was over a thousand songs to choose from. Oh, I didn't know that. And they reduced it down to what's on the album. Um, and, and a lot of musicians kind of use that as like, not that they'd go for a thousand, but they, they understand that. He's talking about 30, 50 songs. And then narrow it down to your, you know, top ten. That's a hard process to go through, I bet. <clears throat> and of course that one there's a song on that album I can't stand, but whatever. Which one? The girl is my ah, Yes. Yeah. It's horrible. And I love Paul McCartney and I love Michael, but boy, their collaboration is a horrible song. I didn't like it as a kid, I don't like it now. Like I didn't even like it as a kid. I was I owned the album as, I was eight years old or seven or eight years old when the album came out and I had it on uh, as an LP. Man, I love that album. I used to dance to it and everything, and I, I, I would, bet you that one was a forced one that he, he didn't have any control over. I want. Oh, I wonder. The girl is mine, mine, mine. mine the girl. Mine. Hey, hey, I'm in love with another fighter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and then, how yeah. do you go about like deciding what goes on? Do you just be like, I've got this, or do you sort of test them out on people? I think you. I think you can do that. And you do do that, obviously, to, to a degree. But I think if you start asking too many people, it gets away from like uh -huh. what you like. So I think mm, kind of yeah. when it came to the end of it, I had to be like, all right, which songs do I want it right. to be? Did you ask Ed then, ever? Yeah, I played him a couple of songs, yeah. But I hadn't seen him for a bit because I was away. So I played him I played him a couple of songs after the album was finished. Right. He didn't say, oh, I don't like these. <laughs> You're like, no. too late now. It's pretty He liked one that wasn't on there. Oh, no. But Mm. So I was like, -side. I had a little minute of like, yeah, um, mm -hmm. no, but, yeah. yeah next, so. next, save it for later. Yeah. EP, yeah. EP of summer. Is it terrifying as a male solo artist? You know? Well, I was just going to say, we talked about this before, another reaction I've, unrelated to Harry, but the idea that artists, especially with their first album, they will have a lot of songs because they're just kind of vomiting all the stuff they want to do. Like, I got to get this out there. It's all in me. I've been waiting all these years. Like, even Harry said, there's an out a song that I wrote years ago with the One Direction Boys. Like, there's all this stuff that I want to get out there to the public. So what will happen with the second or third album, unless the, unless the artist advertises this was a song I've written before, they, they usually don't because they always want to have the appearance that every song was written strictly for that album and it's never been conceived beforehand. But I'm telling you right now, folks, a lot, the majority of artists have a catalog of songs in their repertoire. They'll tweak it and change it, but I, it's just the way it goes. Every artist has, like Harry says, a thousand songs in their back catalog. They may have already laid down tracks or beats for it. And then when it comes to album number two, album number three, album number four, like, man, we need a 12. Okay, well, let me go. Look, they'll pull things out. And yeah. 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 So I wonder how much of albums two and three from Harry. Mm -hmm. We don't know unless he tells us. Unless he says, you, you got to wonder how many could have been a part of that group that just didn't make the first album, and they tweak it or fine tune it or whatever. Yeah, or any any artist for that matter. Yeah. Of course, any artist. Of course, the Ed Sheeran is alive and well. I just think he's he's really good. He's it's killing one of the it. He's a great guy. We like we didn't get a lot of more Ed dudes. Sheeran requests, but we love him. Did you message him when it was like the entire top ten was Ed Sheeran? Because I had to message him. Go, I said, "This is hilarious," which yeah. I don't know if he <laughs> didn't respond to. But I, I mean, it's so mad, it's unheard of that sort of thing. He's really good at writing songs. I mean, he really, really is. He really yeah. is. Currently, five hundred songs yeah. in the top four. He also writes so many for like everyone else. I know. So when he came, I'd see him and I'd be like, "Do you want to hear my first single?" And he'd be like, yeah. And then he'd go, do you want to hear everyone else's first single? It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just written them all. Yeah. Oh, wow. So throw us a bone, Ed. Come on, yeah. I'm sick of this radio life. Um, next one. It's my musical um, icon. Um, I know you're involved in every aspect of your songs from writing. Who's this? And this is mum. To <laughs> the mixing and the mastering. <clears throat> Is there a part of it that you enjoy as much as the recording and the performance? Hey, this is mum. I called it. Nate, I oh, called okay. it. 
Oh. I thought it looks like his mom. She's very attractive. It's like that looks like his. Um, I want to go back and see. I just didn't know her real name or maiden name or whatever. Is there a part of it that you enjoy as much as the recording and the performance? What a lovely woman, eh? Um, mm-hmm. And also, you have a very eclectic taste in music that you listen to. Um, so, what would you say has inspired the style of music for your first release? Oh my God, your mum thinks she's on Jules Holland. <laughs> putting on like a bit of a posh accent. There. She's trying to get a Radio 4 gig. <laughs> um, excuse me. Um, <laughs> what do you think has inspired your music? That, you don't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> what does she talk like? And it is on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't even remember what the question was. <laughs> it's too distracting. She wanted to ask something technical because she thought it um, would okay. throw you. I think I like the writing part the most and what inspired it. I think, I don't know really, I think it's hard to not um, have influences from like what you grew up listening yeah. on. I think that's kind of, I think everyone reacts differently to like different types of music. And then really I think... I just, I don't know. I was with, like, the guys I was writing with, and we just wanted to make, like, what we wanted to listen to. Right. And I think that's been the most fun part for me about making the whole album is, it's like, at the moment, I mean, in the least weird way possible, it's, like, my favourite album to listen to at the moment. Like, I love listening to it. I think that's Um, how it should sound. I think so. I think, like, if you put out something that you don't, like, stand behind and really love, then... If it doesn't go well, then you could regret not doing yeah. what you wanted to do. Whereas, you know, if nothing happens with it, I love it. So I think I think that's kind of what you should do. Yeah. But um, I think that's been my favorite part of the overall thing is kind of. Sorry, before he goes on, I've heard of this for some artists where, especially when it's when it's like overproduced by teams of other people that are creating it, they don't want to listen to it afterwards because it like triggers all of the, you know, all these people trying to make their album. So they won't mm. listen to their own content. Um, mm. It's it's not, it's pretty rare because most artists, they love their work, right? That's pretty, pretty common. Mm-hmm. But I, I have heard this and I won't mention names, but from certain artists that, that uh, yeah, they, they're, it's, it's too cringy for them to go back and listen because of all hmm. the memories it triggers. Yeah. Interesting listening to the album and making all the changes and it's been it's been fun to kind of like watch over it all and i think people sense that you know like people know if you like the record or i know like if i hear an album i'm always like or like florence i feel like really is a florence fan right or like rihanna i guarantee listens to rihanna music on her holidays right do you know what i mean like i believe that they're they're committed and and yeah not into themselves in a big-headed way but they're a fan of themselves. And I think you've got to be. Yeah, I think you have to write. Mm. I think the thing is, is like, I think a lot of people, especially at labels and stuff, do, they like separate it and they think because they work in music, it's like a a broader understanding of music than people who listen. But I think we're all just fans of music. Yeah. So I think we made it as like the fan. Yeah. You know, what do I want to listen to and try to write that? So. Then that's um, normal. It's like if you're making a movie if we do our little dumb channel that we do, same idea, like, would I want to watch me? Like, is this something, if I was watching this content or this music video or whatever it is, like, I, I know you got to be, to the to the I know and self be true, as Shakespeare said. I'm, I'm, I understand that, but I'm not talking about the mass audience. That's what I mean. Would I enjoy mm-hmm. what I'm doing? Now, other people might not, but you have to, am I the audience for me? And if you're not the audience for yourself, then I would question what it is you're doing because mm. you would have to sort of enjoy your own work or art or I don't know why you're doing it. So, yeah. Yeah. To thine own self be true. I think about that and I go, we like, it's hard for me to watch our, our reactions. No, I don't like when, watching mine. <laughs> but when we, we go and like when we do some of our dumb videos together and make stuff up or do the voiceover videos or the, you know, I watch those all the time. I think they're hilarious. Um, nobody else does, but nobody else does. But that's okay. Yeah, I think they're hilarious. Yeah. You're a good man. All right. <laughs> I mean, I hope we we did it a good job. But um, I really like the album, so I hope people like. It's a good it. album. Did you know Harry? your mom had sent that video? By the way, I didn't. No. no. Do you like the your mom and I converse? <laughs> it's like they're so worse. <laughs> so there we go. 
Questions from Thanks the floor. Thanks for doing that. You're welcome. It was really annoying, was actually. Nice, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, but I wanted to do it for you. I appreciate but I, it. <laughs> but it was quite like, oh, God. And she, everyone was like, I'm on a plane. Can you contact me later? I was like, God, it's really hard getting over the yeah. four most famous people in the world. Chris Martin, <laughs> Rita Ora. And twist, Ronnie Wood and Ed Sheeran. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for those. Great questions. Lovely people. Thank you, guys. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well spoken. We've said this before. We'll close with this. Harry's also very he's very good on the mic, very well spoken, very protective. You know, he doesn't reveal too much, which is fine. Like, he doesn't have to. But you can sense he has this bit of a guard up, even with his friend here. It's still a bit of a guard. Like, even, like... I know I'm, I can be goofy and I'm silly because we're just a dumb YouTube channel. So, of course, when that lady, Rita, came on, she's like, Harry did a little bit. He did a little bit of, like, you know, turn his head around, like, looking around, kind of perplexed, like, why am I looking at this woman in a bikini like this? But he didn't say anything. He, didn't, he kept it safe. There's no quote. There's no, no, nobody can grab a quote from the Grimmy show. Harry said this about, Re he said nothing. Because even Grimmy was the one said, oh, for our audio listeners, just so you know, she was wearing a bikini. But Harry didn't even comment on it. So he's yeah. he's very good at protecting, which is fine. You got to be because he didn't even make a comment on it. Didn't even say a word. He did the look, kind of mm -hmm. like, what's going on here? Why am I? Why am I? But he didn't say, why am I seeing her in a bikini? He just said, why am I watching this? What? What? Like? Yeah. So, anyways, uh, he's very good. He's very good at his uh, at his product. Sorry, at his um, his image and uh, his perception to the public. His uh, brand. He's his brand that is a brand. He, absolutely, he's a brand. So he's very good at it. I do like him, though. I do like his professionalism, and uh, sometimes I got to work on mine. I know, but uh, anyways, I oh. now too bad Harry's mom didn't come on the bikini. That would be okay. Oh, Nathan, stop, would you stop? Stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> you know what is wrong hey. with you? What is wrong with you? With me. Um, <laughs> you have you have me as a friend. <laughs> okay, uh, I just wanted to finish with I I really would love to see a collaboration between Chris Martin and uh, Harry. I think it would actually go quite well. Like I say, they have a lot of things in common. Um, mm, yeah, I, I know they're friends. People have said it here uh, in the chat that they're they're good friends, but uh, I I just think they could. They have such a similar. It's it's not the same, but they're similar to one another, and they'd actually, um, yeah, it, it would, it would work. I the the chemistry would work on on stage, and it would work in their songwriting as well. So mm -hmm. agreed. Yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Celeste. Celeste is the best when it comes to this stuff. She gives us some really uh, great videos and content, and she's such a sweetheart. And thanks, Celeste. And everyone, thanks Celeste for this one. Celeste is amazing. Thanks, Celeste. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Whether you're a patron here watching us, before live. you shut off, sorry, before you shut off, listeners, I want to say the Harry Styles, the NPR Tiny Desk concert, has officially drum roll please been blocked on YouTube. It's been blocked. I disputed it, and they came back and said no, 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 no. no. So no. if you want to see our reaction to Harry Styles Tiny Desk concert NPR, it's only available on our Patreon. Thanks everybody. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.